This is how Bill Cushenberry's space coupe looked the first time I saw it. Gene Winfield lent a hand moving the space coupe from Lancaster, California to Kurt Hamilton's shop in Van Nuys. Willie Newman, a renowned aluminum body man from New Zealand, was hired in July 2008. We knew he was contracted to Mercedes to work on their new SLS AMG Gullwing car in Germany, so the push was on to finish our historic car before Willie had to leave in 2009. So before we could start restoring and completing it, we had to sandblast and straighten the chassis. We built a rotisserie and mounted the chassis. And then we moved the refurbished chassis to a rolling cart and attached the body. We had a new bubble blown at Crystal Craft in Laverne, California. As 2008 came to a close, Carl's health was failing and Willie had to return to Germany to work for Mercedes. So we moved the space coupe to Nebraska, where it remained in storage for over seven years. Ryan has just arrived okay. from Nebraska. Yes, Nebraska. Three-day trip has brought the uh, space coupe with him here in this truck. And we're going to offload it here at uh, Jeff Williams California Corvairs. There she blows.
Corvairs here in Chino Hills, California. I'm just going to speak a little bit about Bill Cushenberry, his choice on the uh, Corvair front end, uh, rear end suspension and drivetrain. Um, I had never spoke with Bill, but uh, I've seen similar things where they'll transplant a Corvair drivetrain and or front axle suspension, uh, usually because of the first reason, because it is a very transplantable tr uh, powertrain. The way General Motors designed this from wheel to wheel, the K-member and the drivetrain itself was known as the Unipack. And the Unipack can be simply unbolted from any chassis and placed into any other chassis. I'm sure Cushenberry recognized that back in the 60s. We need to have a drivetrain that has some torque and some power and is very transplantable. And I'm sure that's why he picked the Corvair uh, base to do that. 140 horsepower. It should have four carburetors. Uh, it's a 164 cubic inch engine uh, fitted with a 355 axle and a Power Glide two speed transmission. The Power Glide two speed transmission is very similar to the full size Power Glide, however, it is a Corvair designated Power Glide. Then you have your straight axle suspension with swing axle, uh, has four lugs. As we move to the front here, we also have a Corvair front end. Again, a very transplantable four bolts, six bolts, the front ends in anything you want to build it around. You can see a couple bolts here and a couple bolts here. Basically, that's what's holding this whole Corvair front suspension into the, the subframe that Cushenberry built. So again, for the same reason as the back, it's a very transplantable suspension, drum to drum, or wheel to wheel in this case, that you don't really have to alter too much. That's why I think they picked the Corvair drivetrain. I think the Corvair drivetrain, obviously from my standpoint, is an excellent choice. It's lightweight, puts out a good amount of horsepower, a good amount of torque, and it's not a, a complicated, has no radiator, water system, or anything like that to complicate things. So it's a really, it's a very simple, very effective, and very transplantable platform. Cylinder heads. These are uh, these are your cylinder heads, Barry, for the Silhouette 2. Uh -huh. um, these are 140 heads. They have two intakes for the carburetors, but most importantly, they have larger valves than a standard Corvair head. Um, and then what we've done is put deep seats in here, new stainless steel forged swirl polished valves, bronze valve guides, we've surfaced the heads, uh, milled the valve cover rails, heavy duty springs, a five angle a valve grind. And we repair all the thread holes, including sheet metal and spark plug holes, valve cover holes and such. So this is a fully remanufactured head. It is not a simply cleaned and, and ground valve uh, job. It is a completely rebuilt head. Uh, the next thing is the engine case. Again, I wasn't going to use your engine case. We're starting with a new one. About four hours worth of prep work here, Barry. Uh, including glass beating. Obviously, we mic everything first and check its integrity before we spend any time cleaning it. But then we glass beat it, we chase all the threads. It's a known, it's a known commodity by the time we start assembly. We have a proprietary uh, counterbore that we do here on the case bolts. There are two lar there's large case bolts that bolt the case together and they have a propensity to leak through there. So we've developed a, uh, a proprietary uh, system for putting O-rings in there. So it's a little just extra uh, added uh, uh, quality. Uh, this is your crankshaft here. I'm going with a standard crankshaft is a forged crankshaft. It's not been machined. It's been micro-polished. Uh, it's within uh, uh, spec at standard. Uh, this is also the uh, new cam here and then our, our, our own uh, billet cam gear which is much better than the stock cam gear. And that's made up in Burbank actually. Um, then here we're running reboard cylinders. These are 30 thousandths over with rebuilt rods. New pistons and rings obviously. So at this point we're about ready to start through the final assembly on the engine. Once we do that, we'll focus on carburation and get this thing buttoned up with your transax. Three, two, one. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. 
not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Since we last left, we were on the other side trying to reproduce the same door opening geometry for the right side. So we made this cardboard pattern based on the angles that we took off of this plane. And we came up with this, and this will sit here to give me the pitch of what I'm looking for. So that's what all these numbers on here all represent, different spacing and what angle it's going to be at this particular point. So from this, we came up then, proceed on to beginning to shape the interior door frame or the skeleton or whatever you want to call it, and then to simulate the same as what we have on the left side. So this will give us mirror image of the geometry left to right at these dimensions. So now we have this structure that we've come up with that will pivot and open the same geometry when they're open left to right. We're trying to keep it lightweight 
So we're doing it like a triangular pattern, much like you would a roller coaster. So this is the beginning of it, and then I'll complete it uh, with a little more work, a little more uh, triangulation, and that'll give us the strength we need without it becoming too heavy. And then this door here acts, as you can see, with the roof line, which is a simulation of, the, of what will be the glass panel that will be in here. They come and they will, they will meet together, along with the windshield and the center line of the other door on the left-hand side. So this is kind of where we're at now as far as door goes. That will then hold what will be eventually, as we're still working on it, the door panel itself will then go and attach to that. So now, now that we've laid the skin on top, it gives you some kind of idea of how the door will look. If we prop the door up early right now, open the left side, you should be able to see that we'll have matching geometry when we get the height of it, left to right. And that hopefully will be what uh, Bill Cushenberry was going for. So last time we left off, we went over the door frame and how it's fitted to replicate the door left and right. We're at the stage of final fitting of the door skins. We've moved from the skins now and we're going up into the top because they all tie together. So this is our fiberglass mold of the dome in how it will eventually give us the shape and how it will look. We've tied that in with a piece for the front, which is the molding of the windshield. Now these are just mold set up pieces at this stage. This will be clear. This will all be clear. Eventually the whole dome is going to be clear. But for right now, this is just our mock-up stage. Once we know that we can maintain gaps, the function and opening and closing of all the doors. We've got the chassis separated from the body. And now we're going to send it out to Jeff Williams Corvair, California Corvair. And then uh, he's going to fit the motor and the transmission all back in here. So we can get our wheel, wheel track set up. And then also on the front, Jeff's going to rebuild all the chassis on the front. Put all the suspension and everything back on while I continue on with the body work. He's going to uh, help out by carrying on with the frame. And then he can assemble this and get it back to me and then we'll set the body over it and make sure we've got no tyre clearance issues or uh, steering turning issues, hitting fenders and all that sort of thing. We'll carry on from there. There's a table of parts over here for Jeff Williams. Are the bits and pieces that uh, showed up with the car. Saves a bit of time with him helping out on the frame. So should be good. Here we have the body off the chassis. And what did you have to do to stabilize this? So we added a, you know, a bunch of cross bracing uh, to hold, support the front. Not a lot of material in the center, so it would have just folded if we tried to pick it up without it. So the extra bracing just holds all the body in shape so we can carry on with building the, the rest of the body work and start the interior pan while the chassis is out with Jeff Williams. Excellent. Well, it's really looking very much like the space coupe. All the work that you've done in the last few months, it's really taking shape. Okay, so what we've got going on now is we're building door structures. So we fabricate an inner door frame, which will be transferred to the body as we've started up here, like a water trough. We'll run down, the pieces will connect all the way down as it comes down the side and continue on under here, around the door frame, and then we transfer this into here, and that will sit in there. And once we have that in the right position, we will weld the door frame into the bodywork, and then remove the door skin, because the door skin is now just holding and maintaining our correct gap that we'll eventually have. We'll remove the door skin, the door frame will be in, which will leave us with the next step, which will then be connecting the 
the rest of the door structure. So we'll then tie this to this. And when that's connected, we'll then pick up our door frame, set this back, the skin on it, which we can show you on this other door over here. Once we have this opening, like this, we can then transfer it to the skin as part of the structure. Put that in, fold the edges over, and then that's what will tie the door skin to the door frame. Just like every other conventional door. The reason that we're double stacking the three inch and not using a one piece of six is because I get more wall structure. I get two extra layers in the center for the wall structure by doing it this way. We didn't do straight because that's what everyone would do. This looks cooler. So all this old support structure that's been in here for the last 40 years and that'll be replaced with the new frame over here that we got on the table. All that rusty stuff you can see we'll remove because that's what they used to use primarily to shape the body on. Well I'll remove all that. So that'll be the inner structure that we're about to fit right now and we'll put all that in there. Slip under here. There. Hi, I'm Jeff Williams. Today we're talking with uh, Barry Gramillion and covering the Space Coupe. Built by Bill Cushenberry, of course, back in the mid-60s. This is a Chevrolet Corvair front cross member. It's been shortened and uh, obviously we've done some chrome work, but it will be running drum brakes. Here we have the Corvair cross member, also known as a K member. And that basically is the keel of the, uh, of the ship, if you will. Once that's laid down, everything's built onto it. This is really a 140 engine. So Bill would have used the bigger engine because it was the best engine Chevrolet Corvair offered at the time. It has the four single one barrels. We put a 270 cam in it and then we dressed it up. Obviously a lot of chrome work. Uh, we've rotated the carburetors, did uh, custom linkage. We have a mini output uh, polished alternator, uh, the billet HEI distributor. It's running the Corvair lower control arms and it's the early model Corvair swing axle design with drum brakes in the back. It's also coupled up with a uh, power glide two-speed transmission. The engine uh, will give good performance. It's a two-speed automatic, so it's easy to drive. So we're almost complete. Okay, so now that we've continued with the design of both left and right hatches or doors, uh, we've come to the conclusion that Bill, which would confirm he seemed to be going towards a single seater because as you can see, the height of the hatch, as you move further to one side, there's no clearance for your head. So the only way it could possibly work is to be in the center and that way you would achieve the design he was looking for based on the parameters that we know with this design. We're here at uh, Wonderworks, Emin and Chris, and they're working on the interior, Here's some design yeah. ideas. Okay. So this actually might tie in with the idea you're thinking of the bubble. So on this one, the dash doing something where it basically scallops and comes to a point. This would be the facing towards the occupant, you know, the, the pilot, you might say, <laughs> not necessarily the, the uh, driver. And uh, as if the whole dash were cut away right in the center, let's say kind of like over here. As if it was cut straight down, you know, at this point, and then looking straight into the side. 
Yeah, I see. So that's the profile. Yes. Something very, very shallow. And it just sits right on top of the dash and your gauge is slightly arced like this, huh. possibly, and then just mimicking this kind of boomerang shape to it. So we can cover this up with just a large, bulky cushion, possibly build some, some of the buttons into it, and maybe even build some of the gauges into the front here where it curves back around, possibly. <laughs> Now it looks a lot more complete once you start to build all this out now. Absolutely. And it's getting to that point where we can actually get it all built out now. The tub that we've been talking about for so long. Yeah. Because now... Yeah, because we've done all the smaller thing, all this opening, all affects that because it affects the shape of the fender, which affects the shape of this, which affects, you know, how we fit it in around the suspension. It's all, everything's connected. Mm -hmm.